What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript challenge video where we sharpen our JS skills by solving simple problems. And today's challenge is following where essentially we need to create a function that takes in two arguments, two numbers. And then from this function, we need to return another function that takes in two arguments. And then from that one, another function that, yes, also takes in two arguments. And at the very end, we need to do the calculation where we take the first numbers in the sequence. So first argument, first argument, and first argument, we multiply them. And then we add the second set of arguments. So here, notice is the addition. And then again, we do the multiplication, where we go with second argument, second argument, and second argument. And as a result, if I have this type of invocation, I'm going to have 19. And then if I pass in different set of arguments, then of course, the value is going to be different, because in this case, I have zero. So zero times any number, of course, is zero. And then as a result, I get here 10. And the biggest gotcha here is the fact that in JavaScript, functions are first class citizens. So not only we can pass them as arguments, but we can also return from the function, another function. And I just thought that this is going to be an awesome example where we can work on that. Now I'll start with good old function, meaning I'll create my function with function keyword, and then eventually we'll refactor it to arrow functions. And in this case, I think I'm going to remove the console log, and then we just go with function, then we need to come up with a name. In my case, I'm going to go with example. And we already know how we can pass in two parameters. And we just need to come up with a name, whether taco and burrito, or a and b. And then of course, as far as the logic, we can start simply by console logging a and b. And if I invoke my function, and if I'll console log right away, example, and if we'll pass in some values, let's say one and two, of course, in here, I can see that these are the values that I'm passing in. So that's an awesome start. We can pass in our arguments. What's next? Well, now let's make things a bit more interesting. And instead of right away console logging, why don't we return another function from this example? Now, in this case, I'm not going to come up with a name. And of course, we need to first go with return, then we're going to go with function keyword, then we'll set up the function body. And I'll move that console log inside of this function. And then let me save it. And then the moment, of course, I save, nothing happens. Why? Well, because from the example, I'm returning this function. So in order for this code to run, of course, I need to invoke it. Now, at the moment, I'm not passing any arguments, but I still need to set up my parentheses. Or, of course, if you assign this to some kind of variable, then you'll have to invoke that variable in such a manner as well. And now, of course, you can see that I have one and two. So essentially, I passed in these arguments in the example. And then from the function that I'm returning, there I'm console logging them. And now let's do the same thing where we go with C and then D. So these are the arguments that we pass into the second function. And now let's just see whether we can access them. And of course, we can. And now I have one, two, and undefined and undefined. So in here, we simply need to pass in those values. So in my case, I'm going to go with three and four. And what's really nifty that, of course, we can access all of these values in the second function. So now we just need to repeat the same thing and then return another function from the second one. Now, why do you see here undefined? Well, because that's the value that by default in JavaScript we return if we don't have anything set as return. So if I go here with return and one, this is, of course, what the function is going to be returning. But since I don't have anything, that's why I have that undefined. So let's do the same thing where we're going to go with return function. Now, in this case, I'll pass E and F. So those are going to be the names of my parameters. And then as far as the logic, now let's move this sucker down. And let's say that we want to console log all of them, E and F. And now let's invoke one more time because now we have the situation where not only I'm returning a function from example, but from that function, we return another one. So that's why we set up another set of parentheses. And we go here with five and six. Again, I have undefined, but what's really cool is that I can access all of these values. And notice how we pass them down. So example is looking for A and B, then the second function, 
and then the third function. And essentially, yes, you can nest this as deep as you would like. And uh, essentially, now we just need to come up with a functionality where I want to go with return. And then what I want to do, well, I want to multiply a times and not b, but I'm looking for c. And then the same thing over here, where we go with e. So those are the first arguments in the sequence. And then we do the same thing with b and d and f. Now, of course, we just need to add the addition here. So b times d and times f. So once we have this type of logic, now, of course, I have 64, because I multiply one times three times five, and then I add two times four, and then six. So of course, if we test out with these values, we should get 19. And we should also get 10. So let me copy and paste two times. And now let me just change these values where I'm going to go with one, two, and then one, two. Let me set up here three and then four. Of course, this is going to be 19. And the same we'll do with the last one where we go with one, two, zero, one. And of course, it's going to be zero, five. So we go here with zero and then five. And as the last thing, I would want to refactor this to the error function. So this is with good old functions with function keyword. And now let's just refactor this to the error function. So I'll comment this one out. Of course, at the moment it says example is not defined. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. And we go with the same name example. And what's really cool that with arrow functions, we have the implicit return, where I go with example he is looking for two arguments. And then from example, I want to right away return a function. So in here, instead of setting up a function body, and then saying return function, I simply can go with another set of parentheses. And that just means that I'm returning another function from the arrow function. So same name for the arguments, I'm going to go with CD. And then what do we do from this function, we return another function, correct? So we'll return here, and we'll be looking for E and F. And then finally, we just need to go with our logic. So we do the same thing here, then copy and paste. And notice how the values did not change. So that's how we can set up a function that returns two more functions. And then we pass in the arguments. And at the end, we just do some kind of logic with those arguments.